Hi, it's Bernie Goldbach, and it's the 18th of May, 2014. I'm looking at some stuff that's inside the business and money sections of the Sunday Business Post, the Irish Independent, and the Sunday Times, because there's a lot of signals out there. And I'm talking to you using a Nokia Lumia 1020 phone on audioboo.fm stroke top call. Okay, we may enter through this, but most of it's going to end up with signals, signals being put out through different mechanisms and stuff regarding the squelching of those signals. But there are signals being sent by Paddy Cosgrave. Now, what he does is he runs the summit. That's Paddy. The summit's on high. So says the business section. It might be written by Brian Carey, the business editor. Profits at the summit are up more than 300%. That's 650,000 euro after its main event attracted 10,000 people. Gavin Daly wrote it. Patty's got some time on the news where he basically says all graduates aren't made the same. I can't get rent down to my level of expectation in Dublin. I can't get people to apply that are the highest caliber. He's got 385 internship applications, though. There's two just positions open. And even though he says that Trinity guys, Triner winners, I would call them, are better than LIT graduates. Signals being put out on stage there. Signals that... Zesty would have won. So Simply Zesty is a PR company that was bought by UTV Media. They paid, um, well, they said they might have been able to pay 3.3 million sterling. But as it turned out, they just got paid approximately 245,000 euro on the value of, of something that would have been up to 3 million sterling. Well, how that happened? UTV had to write off 188,000 sterling that had attributed to the value of Simply Zesty's customer relationships. The signals Zesty put out weren't as strong as UTV found out they were. Signals. What are they hap what's happening to signals that are out on the internet? Adrian Weckler picks up something that you might want to listen to this week in Google episode 249 about. And it's about having the right to remain forgotten and shrined by law. So anyway, it's a court case and this compilation of newspaper items will deal with it. But Adrian's got a good little metaphor. He said, look, what happened if you walked into a library trying to research something and you, can f you can't find a card catalog where you discover a bunch of black redacted lines in the card catalog? So you ask the librarian what's going on, try to figure out where the book is located in the stacks. The librarian says, well, you know what? We have that book, but I'm not allowed to tell you where it is because the book the author or something in that book has invoked the right to be forgotten. And now the library is no longer to inform you where you can find the book. That's what's happening to Google and its court case. The European Court of Justice ruled last week any individual may now pick and choose which article and website links turn up when someone does a search for them by name. It's called the right to be forgotten. Interesting stuff. The great redaction might be the other word used for it. There is no appeal from that, UCG. UCJ, rather, no appeal from the European Court of Justice. Anyone can now be demanding that their personal data removed from search results. Chilling effect, but more. Wait, there's more to the story. Inside here, really fast, uh, some other stuff in the Sunday Independent Bank of Living, Bank of uh, Cost of Living, the IBC, the KBC Bank, the, it's the bank that helps us with our mortgage. Find out that we're squeezed. The cost of living for us is up 7.9%. Things just don't get any better. It's just like... Power costs more, diesel costs more, insurance costs more. Okay, let's talk about censorship, signals, collaborative effects, and a few other things. Jane Rafino writes in a technology section on the Sunday Business Post, basically looking at this issue of the European Court of Justice, pointing out that censorship, basically a risk that it could end up in the same realm as defam defamation law. The law that, that has been the right to be forgotten law should be able to protect people from damaging and malicious behavior, but in reality, it's just protecting the powerful from criticism. <laughs> That's right. Jerry Adams, if you don't like something that's been written about you in the past, you can just have your right to be forgotten. And the whole thing about the North and the troubles and, you know, how do you deal with the past, gone in one quick swath, swipe of the hand. Remove all those incidents of bombings and terrorist attacks. Okay, so who would you go to about this? In actuality, your right to know is actually a matter of reputation management because you don't like something written about online. It's your reputation you're really caring about.
John Kempfner says that the European court ruling poses the greatest threat to free speech in years. It's really good news for the corrupt. And it makes the internet truly the battleground for reputation management. Does anyone have the right to control information online? I mean, do you have the right to control every tweet, photograph, and blog reference that has been written about you? People that might have tagged you? Recorded stuff you said? Well, how about J.J. Worrell looking at social media and how this might impact your life? Now, the fact of the matter is, Worrell's article called Social Media Gold Rush Sees Firms Run for the Hills, it actually isn't about the censorship or the European Court of Justice or thing I just babbled about. But the fact of the matter is, all these guys, and I call a big question into the frame, how come we got four lads and no women, allegedly, who are agencies or experts in social media? They cite uh, Ermerka. She's a technology educator at Yenua Galway, and, um, but they could have listed her. I mean, she looks much more pleasing to the eye than, than Dio, and they gave Dio, what, three columns coverage here? Um, anyway, I'm just wondering the balance of this thing here. But they looked at, the article looks at the fact that so many people claim they're social media experts and maybe are they, are they, aren't they? Well, if they can't measure it or they can't offer a portfolio of skills where someone else says, yeah, he or she helped me with my business, well, then you might want to go somewhere else. There's, a not, there's not a lot of clarity about desired outcomes for activity on a social network. So what happens is most social media people say, if I get you more likes, I must have done my job right. In actuality... Just getting engagement where people happen to know your name may not lead to real business. They can't measure it with something that affects the cash till, footfall, or real world face to face. I think you got a problem. And then these guys here that are involved, they do conferences and stuff, so they can actually measure the result of their engagement online. We can measure, we can also measure the reputation engagement. So my theory is the lads shown on this page, page six, so today's Sunday Business Post Technology section, Money Plus section, they're actually in the space of reputation management because the real quality social media experts are going to be able to measure signals, positive and negative signals about people, help people find stuff that's been written about them, help them raise the solicitor's letters, help the reputations of the firms or the companies or the individuals go to a higher level. Joe Griffin reports about gaming the system through collaboration. Sites Dub Lodo, a get together of minds in the game scene. It's called twitter.com stroke D U B L U L U D O. They meet on June 7th next. A bunch of guys get together. We did this stuff here in Limerick called Limerick Open Coffee. Happy minds. Okay, more about censorship. And here's the fact Frank Fitzgibbon says Europe gets it wrong by rewriting histories. You can listen to Jeff Jarvis saying the same thing. Europe, more than any other continent, should know that it really is dangerous allowing people to rewrite themselves out of history. I mean, can you imagine that anybody who's got anything they think is derogatory about them just getting it struck off? I've, written, I've worked for people who are struck off the list of the company's registration office as directors because they were involved in the wrong kind of thing. Well, they can rewrite history. One of these guys... It's profiled in the social media gold rush story, rewrote history in his own LinkedIn profile. You look back on them and you won't, you'll discover there's big gaps in what he did. And you'll discover that recommendations left by people connected to him, gone. And past connections to people that he used to be connected to, gone. Because he was able to rewrite it himself. And as a result, that kind of social media skill we brought to the bear for helping other companies decide the size Right. Two failed startups. Let's just write that out of the history. As elections get nearer, beware of politicians bearing gifts, urges Justine McCarthy. Basically, um, she, she speaks of something everybody encounters in any country. Trophy-style inducements for great swaths of the electorate get people elected. Yeah. And then you can rewrite it out of history. We don't remember saying that because it's not in Google anymore. We had it taken out. Kevin Myers, cautionary tale, future predators are going to use the EU Google to whitewash their tracks, to cover them up. That's a fact. You don't like something's written about you, you've been given the right to get rid of it. Okay, enough of me babbling to you. i got stuff to do here. You can see outside, got to fix some space there, make it more than just cut grass, ugly cut grass. We have some indoor truck routines and railroad truck 
car routines. I got some stuff I'm going to do playing with this Nokia 1520 phone. I love it. Love this big phone, big guy. Listen to Twig right now on it. And you can see where I am inside of the space that used to be my office. Now converted into a room that kids can use for fun things like jumping rope or kicking the ball. I'm Bernie, the Blown American County Tip. You can see me on YouTube saying this if you want, or listen on audioboo.fm stroke top gold. Bye for now.